Hello, good morning, yeah, buddies. Last week, we only got two more assignments left, um, and this is going to be one of them. And this, of course, is our um, last lab, reproduction lab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this PowerPoint of uh, materials and information with you. Then I'll pull up the PDF, the lab report, fill out a couple things for you. And then, of course, I'll leave you with a bunch of stuff that you're going to have to do. All right. Before you submit it. So this is the reproductive system. Um, in this PowerPoint presentation, we have models, right? So I'm going to go over the models. We have microscopic observations um, of the ovaries and the testes. So we have two microscopic observations that we have to do. Um, the first model is um, of the male reproductive system. And this is a, um, this is called a coronal section or a frontal section. No, I'm sorry, a sagittal section, right? Um, so what is, is going on here? Well, some of these structures are in the way and we can't really see everything so clearly. Um, but there are some things that we can see. And one thing that we can see is right here. This is called the seminal vesicle. This structure, along with this one, which is called the prostate gland, produce secretions, right, or liquids that help the sperm cells that are produced all the way down here in the testes exit the body. So as the sperm cells are produced all the way down here in the testes, they get stored here in the epididymis. And then when it's time for them to leave, they go through the vas deferens, this tube, all the way around. And these two structures, these two are glands, they're going to be adding uh, secretions to those cells that will help them on their journey out of the body. But there's a tube that goes through here, which we can't see because it's covered by these other structures that eventually meets up with the urethra. Remember, the urethra is how we get urine outside of the body from the bladder. All right, so the urethra would be under here. So the urethra not only transports urine out of the body, but it also is going to be transporting sperm cells. All right, so these sperm cells go through the seminal vesicle and the prostate gland um, as they go through the vas deferens. And you can see that um, there's a lot of activity down here. There's a lot of cells down here, and all your cells need blood supply. So the, the blood supply is provided through the testicular artery and vein. Um, and then the epididymis is an important structure. This is where the sperm cells are made down here in the testes, but they are stored in the epididymis. All right, so the testes is the male gonad. The testes make the male gametes, which are called sperm cells. And the testes are kept in a, not deep in the core with the other internal organs, but more externally in this sac called the scrotum. Okay, so if we, if we remove some of these structures, we get a better look. You could see the prostate gland, right? You could see how from the urinary bladder, the urethra goes, goes through the middle of the prostate gland, but also the vas deferens, right? right? There's the urethra. It's a common passageway for urine and sperm cells. And then the male reproductive organ, of course, is the penis. And then we have the testes and the scrotum. Right, the scrotum is a sac that houses the, the testes. If we were to take a slice through the testes and put it on a microscope slide, what would we see? Well, we would see thousands of tubes. So this is um, under the scanning view. So this is um, not a very high um, magnification. But you, we would see all these tubes. Uh, every tube has a lumen or an opening in the middle, right? These are called um, seminiferous tubules. If we take a look on high power, you can see the seminiferous tubules. Inside the tubules, there's thousands and thousands of cells, right? These are the cells that are producing sperm cells, okay? You can see if we look closer to the walls out here, these are the early um, parent cells that are dividing, not by mitosis, but, my, but by meiosis, 
to produce sperm cells. As these cells are dividing, they get pushed towards the lumen. If you look very closely inside the lumen, you could see there's sperm cells in there and these cells will have little whip-like tails. These cells are coming from these larger cells out here, all right? These are called spermatogonia cells, all right? And these are the ones inside here with the tails are called early spermatids. Okay, but this is the only place in the entire body of a male that meiosis is happening, right? So everywhere else, the cell division is mitosis, but here it's meiosis. And that's why every cell that's formed in here is different. It shows variations. Where in the rest of the body, every cell that's formed by mitosis is a clone of its neighbor. All right, so these are the sperm cells. And when they're formed, they travel through the seminiferous tubules to the epididymis where they're, where they're stored until and they are allowed to mature there as well. If we look at the structure of a sperm cell, we have in the head, there's a cap called an acrosome and it's in that, that acrosome that, that there's digestive enzymes because when the sperm cells meet the egg cell, there's barriers. There's a collection of cells that it has to penetrate that are clinging to the surface of the egg cell, making up a structure called the corona radiata. But even inside of that, there's another protein barrier called the zona pellucida that is difficult to get through. And so what happens is this acrosome will go through a pot process called capacitation. And what that'll do is that'll allow the digestive enzymes that are in here to be released and it'll create a tunnel. It'll burn a tunnel through those barriers so the sperm cell can penetrate the cell membrane of the egg. Of course, there's a nucleus in here, right? This, the whole idea is to deliver chromosomes, right? So there has to be a nucleus. Um, in there's a mid piece and what's going on in the mid piece is there's this mid piece is packed with mitochondria. Mitochondria provide energy. These cells need a lot of energy because they're swimming constantly. They're using a lot of energy as they travel up the birth canal, down the fallopian tubes to meet the egg deep in the fallopian tubes. And they use this whip like tail called the flagella, which is very long. Now in the female, we have completely different structures. We have a uterus here. Uh, we have the oviducts and the ovaries. The ovaries are the female gonads and they produce the female gametes, which are egg cells, also called oocytes. When the egg cells are released, um, they are released into the fallopian tubes or the oviduct. And then the sperm cells will greet them there, fertilize them there, and then they travel down into the uterus. And then we have a couple external features. Again, better look. If you look at the uterus, we have a better view. We've removed some of these structures out of the way so we could see inside the uterus. The uterus is made up of a thick layer of muscle. It's called the myometrium. And then there's, there's an internal surface or the zygote embeds itself, and that's called the endometrium. The endometrium thickens every month in preparation for pregnancy. So there's the uterus. Uh, what separates the uterus from the birth canal is the cervix. The cervix is like a door separating inside the uterus from outside the uterus, this birth canal here. And then we have some external features, structures, this is um, actually an ovary. This is what's going on inside an ovary. Remember the ovary is the female gonad and its job is to produce female gametes. It's to produce eggs. So this whole structure is an ovary, all right? And down here we see very immature egg follicles. These are called primordial, primordial follicles and they're not ready. These egg cells are not ready to be released. They're too immature, but as time goes on, they will grow and grow into primary follicles and then secondary follicles, finally um, maturing into these large graphene follicles. This, this is the type of follicle that, that holds the egg. 
that is now ready to be released. When the egg cell is being released, and you can see this one's being released right now, that's called ovulation. What happens to this follicle after ovulation? Well, it becomes, it starts to look like this. This is a follicle that has lost its egg through ovulation down here. All right. So this is during ovulation, and then it differentiates into this structure, which is called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is important um, because what it's going to do is if this egg cell becomes fertilized, right, if the woman becomes pregnant, then the corpus luteum sticks around and produces a hormone called progesterone that maintains the thick lining of the uterus during the pregnancy. If this individual does not if this individual egg cell does not become fertilized, then this corpus luteum will degenerate, um, forming into um, a corpus albicans, and then slowly it'll degenerate further until it just goes away. All right, so this is your second microscopic observation. This is a slice, a cross section of the ovary. Again, this is. Um, through the scanning view and you can see all the way out here at the at the edge of the ovary we have developing follicles so these these are all holding egg cells but they're not ready to be released this is a mature graphene follicle and this is what you're going to be drawing as your microscopic observation so the whole structure is a follicle here is the egg and all this clear this white stuff in here is um, filled with fluids this is called an antrum and it's this antrum that allows us to see that this is a mature follicle this big empty antrum right if the follicle is big and empty like that that's a mature follicle this egg is going to be released soon okay this is not so big this is a developing follicle this is an immature follicle this egg is not going to be released anytime soon. It needs more time. On, on high power, same thing, um, developing follicles up near the surface and a large graphene follicle. Had, there's your egg cell and here's your antrum right here in the middle. This, this thing right here. All right, so that's your second microscopic observation. So you're going to refer to this. I'm going to provide a copy of this presentation. So refer to this when you do it. Let's say an egg becomes fertilized. What happens next? Well, it goes from being one cell, which is called a zygote. It now will divide by mitosis, right? Forming into two cells and then four cells, eight cells, 16 cells, 32 cells, so on and so forth until it forms into something that looks like a little berry. This is called the morula stage. And that'll form into a blastula stage, which is like a hollow ball of cells. Um, a late blastia, blastula will have cells on the outside and then an inner cell mass. The cells on the outside are called the cells of the trophoblast. And then this inner cell mass is really what's going to be forming into the body of the baby. These cells out here don't contribute to really anything. They're more supportive. So things like the placenta and the umbilical cord and stuff like that will be formed from these structures out here, the amnion. Um, but the body is coming from this inner cell mass right here. As the embryo develops, um, there's some structures. This, these are common in all chordates, all vertebrates, right? All mammals, let's say, somites, uh, a neural tube down the middle. That's going to be differentiated into what's called um, your spinal cord and brain, a heart, liver, gills. We all begin with gills and these segments called somites. We have a tail in the beginning. Eyes will appear, leg buds will appear, arm buds, the somites are still there. Um, eventually what's gonna happen is after you make contact with the mother's blood, you're gonna produce um, a placenta, right? So the placenta 
is a, um, a structure that taps into mom's blood and allows nutrients to be exchanged between um, the embryo and the mother without the two bloods touching, all right? <clears throat> you can see all the way on the outside, it looks like villi. These are villi, they are villi, but they're not the villi that we see in the small intestines. These are chorionic villi, and they're absorbing nutrients and other materials from mom's blood and delivering them to the baby. In the meantime, the baby is protected in here inside the amnion, the amniotic sac, with, it's filled with amniotic fluids and it pro provides protection. Um, as the baby develops, it's gonna be producing waste products. Those waste products are gonna be leaving through the amniotic vein and it's gonna be, they're going to, those waste products are gonna be delivered into the mother's blood. Again, crossing through the placenta. So there's the umbilical cord that connects the embryo to the placenta. This is the amniotic sac and the chorion, or the chorion is all that chorionic villi. There's the placenta, amnion. This is the cervix that separates the birth canal from the uterus. And if we look at the placenta through the umbil umbilical cord, there's actually two arteries and one vein. All right, so let's take a look at the um, actual lab and see what we have to do here. I'm gonna open this with Cami, of course. a little bit bigger there we go all right so there's a couple things with a couple of functions we have to put in here starting with the male and um we can do that text all right so, uh what is the job of the scrotum the scrotum is a sack that houses the testes outside the body right the testes are the what? These are the male gonads, and they produce male gametes. In other words, sperm cells. Epididymis is where the sperm cells are stored. they mature we get the sperm cells out of the body you know they go from the epididymis to the outside through the vas deferens so this is a tube that transports uh, the sperm cells outside the body every part of the body needs a blood supply Um, the blood su supplied to the testes is being supplied through the testicular artery and veins. We'll do these two together. The, the seminal vesicles and the prostate gland provide secretions that aid transport of sperm cells. All right. What's the urethra? Well, the urethra was a tube that transports urine out of the body, but now we're seeing it also transporting the sperm cells out of the body. So this is a common passageway for urine. This is the male. Of course, right? 
I'm not going to do this for you. You know where to go to label this correctly. We just went over it. Let's look at the female now. Let's see what we got here. The ovary. This is the female. Gonad. And it produces female Amy. Which is what? Eggs. Fallopian tube is the site of ovulation and fertilization. This is where the sperm cells meet the egg cells. In the uterus, we have two different sections. We have the muscular layer. And we have that inner layer, which is the site of embryonic development. Cervix separates the uterus from the birth canal. And this is the birth canal. And these are all external structures. Okay, hey, uh, again, we have models here. They're giving you clues. They're telling you what, the, what they start with. You shouldn't even need that. Um, go to, to the slides that I'm providing, and you should be able to label those easily. In the seminiferous tubules, um, this is the image of the male microscopic observation that, that we have to do. Um, what are we doing? seminiferous tubules, this is the site sperm cell production. Those are tubes. The lumen is the opening of the tube. This is where the sperm cells end up. Sperm cells are the male gametes. And then interstitial cells are cells outside the tubes. And what are they doing? They produce the male hormone. testosterone. They're also called Leydig cells, right? They're in the slide presentation. You'll find them no problem. This is where you're going to do your drawing. Label the tubules, the interstitial cells, the cells that are outside the tubules, sperm cells inside the lumen. Make sure you fill this out. Um, no need for notes. All right. So what do we have here? How many chrome cell, chromosomes are there in a human testicular cell? Hmm, good question. Well, every cell in the body has uh, 46 chromosomes except for, for sperm cells. Well, testicular cells are not sperm cells, right? So over here, we're gonna put 46. But how many chromosomes are there in uh, sperm cells? Well, it's always half the normal number. So here it's going to be 23. What type of cell division produces sperm cells? Well, cell division throughout the whole body is always mitosis, except when we're producing sperm cells. In that case, it's what? It's going to be a meiosis. What part of the testes makes sperm cells? Is it the seminiferous tubules or the interstitial cells? It's definitely the seminiferous tubules. What part of the testes secretes testosterone? Well, that's outside the tubules. That's in the interstitial cells. 
with some effects of testosterone. Um, what does testosterone do? Well, it controls the production. Sperm cells. That's not all it does, though. It gives males um, what are called secondary sex characteristics. So all those things that uh, happen in males to their bodies that are, don't happen in females happens as a result of the, um, testosterone, right? Thick Adam's apple, deep voice, body hair, that kind of stuff. All right, so developing ovarian follicle, what can we say here? Now we're looking in the female. This is, this is your other microscopic observation. Um, these are found um, in the external portions of the ovary. And they house cells that are not quite ready to be released, right? It's the cells that are in the mature follicles, the graphene follicles that are going to be released, right? The antrum is a large fluid filled cavity inside the follicle. And that's what you look for when you're looking for mature follicles. Female gamete is the egg cell, the oocyte, right? Um, what's the corpus luteum? This is the follicle after ovulation. It has a job. It produces a hormone, progesterone. And if this egg cell does not become fertilized, um, that corpus luteum degenerates. Forming it to the corpus albicans before it eventually goes away. All right. So these, this is the same model that I showed you before and all the different things are labeled here. How many chromosomes are there in the human um, ovarian cells? Well, ovarian cells are body cells, right? So it's gonna be 46. How many chromosomes are there in the egg cells? Well, egg cells are made by meiosis. So it's gonna be half that. So that's 23. What type of cell division, cell division forms egg cells? Well, meiosis. Name the hormones secreted by the developing follicle. Developing follicles actually secrete what's called estrogen. What becomes of the follicle after ovulation it becomes corpus luteum. And what is the hormone that is produced by the corpus luteum? Well, that's progesterone. Progesterone maintains that thick layer of the uterus that was produced by estrogen. Estrogen gets that thick layer. It thickens it. How do we keep it thick? That's the job of progesterone. See, the purpose of estrogen this is how we build up the uterus wall. What's the purpose of progesterone then? This is how we maintain the uterine wall. Keep it thick for nine months. How does size of the egg compare to the size of the sperm cells? The egg cells are much larger. 
much larger. As the number of egg cells produced compared to the number of sperm cells produced? Well, when females are born, they're born with all of their eggs already produced. Somewhere within the, the range of 400 to 500,000 eggs inside of the um, ovaries. Males are not born with all the sperm cells. Actually, they produce them on a daily basis. Um, hundreds of millions of day uh, of sperm cells produced every day. Um, so there are many more. sperm cells than egg cells by a lot. Uh, list the organs in the body where we are finding meiosis happening. Well, there's only two, right? In the ovaries. Oh, sorry about that. Let's see if we can erase that actually. Try that again. Ovaries and testes. All right. This is where you're going to do your second drawing uh, of the ovary. And you're going to label these parts. You're going to fill in this information. You're going to do this on high power. Um, actually, you're going to do it on low power here, it says. Right? So when you're all done... What I want you to do is after you do your low power information, 10x, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, what am I, what's happening? Keep pushing that button. No, it's not erasing for some reason, whatever. Um, 10x, oh my goodness, what is happening here? Oh my God. Let's see here, bear with me, there we go. 10X over there. And then low power is gonna be another 10X. This is gonna be 100X. What I want you to do is when you draw the mature ovarian follicle, you're gonna draw it in here. What I want you to do is estimate the diameter. Of a mature follicle. Remember on low power though, the field diameter going across from here to here all the way across is not 450. It's 1800 micrometers. Remember that. So you're going to use those units. So use that distance, 1,800 micrometers, to estimate the, the, the diameter of the mature follicle. All right. Um, let's see. Maybe we can do this together, too. The acrosome has digestive enzymes. Remember that? This is inside of a sperm cell now. The nucleus has the chromosomes. The midpiece has all that mitochondria. High energy. The jella is the whip-like tail that propels the sperm. Egg cells, again, these are female gametes. When the um, female gamete, the egg, is met with a sperm cell, it, it becomes a fertilized egg. We call the fertilized egg a zygote, right? Zygote will begin um, dividing by mitosis. Um, 
resulting in two cells. So the first cell division of the zygote gives us two cells. Second cell division gives us four cells, so on and so forth. We end up with a morula, then a blastula, then a gastrula. The placenta structure that delivers nutrients. Oxygen. Wastes between mother's blood and embryo. The umbilical cord connects embryo to the placenta. All right, the fetus, when it looks like a person. And, and it stops looking like an alien. We refer to it as a as a fetus, not an embryo anymore. The yolk sac provides nutrients to the embryo until placenta is formed. And the amniotic sac or the amniotic cavity filled with amniotic fluid um, protects the developing. Also prevents from dehydration. And the uterus is the site of embryonic development. All right. So these are some models. They're all labeled. Um, this is a fetus. We call it a fetus because it looks like a person. Um, clearly, this is human, right? So let's label some of these parts. This is the what? What's over here? This is the amniotic sac. This is the fetus. Um, this is the uterus, a portion of it. This is the umbilical cord here. You see this? It connects the embryo or the fetus to the placenta. And this whole structure is the placenta. So this is like a bridge that transports nutrients between mom's blood and baby's blood without the bloods touching or mixing. All right. Okay. This is it. Um, one more assignment after this, and then I think we're going to be done. All right. So good luck. I'll, let's get it in.